friends. Hello. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad to see you. We are live on the Detroit Institute of Arts Facebook page and YouTube. Glad you're here. Okay. We're excited for this episode. Let's get right into this. I got to read a little bit of this book to you. Are you ready? Just the opening page here. It says, <clears throat> skeletons riding bicycles, skeletons wearing fancy hats, skeletons dancing and strumming on guitars. We call this festive bony figures calaveras. In Spanish, the word calavera means skull. A lot of things are associated with skulls and with El Dia de Moretos, the Day of the Dead. They are called calaveras. For example, there are calavera drawings, candy calaveras, calavera poems, and calavera toys. The skeleton figures are not scary. In fact, they look as if they're having fun. Ho ho! And we together today, right now, are gonna have some fun. That's right. We're gonna play with words. We're gonna sing a little bit. We're gonna play. We're gonna look closely at art. There's an awesome exhibit opening at the DIA. And so right now, what I wanna do is let our friend Sibley share just a little bit more about this special day, this special holiday. tell you a little bit about El Dia de Muertos. It's a holiday celebrated throughout Mexico and parts of Central America and the United States. Yep, it's a time to honor and celebrate loved ones who have died. People celebrate in a variety of ways. Some people go to cemeteries to pray, take care of the gravestones, and tell stories of their loved ones while eating their favorite foods. Other people build altars with an ofrenda, or offering. The altars often include photos of the people who've died, their favorite foods or possessions, marigold flowers, candles, playful skulls, and papel picado, cut paper. The altars can be in homes, or in libraries, museums, or other public places. Yeah, we're going to show you some more later today. <laughs> Thanks to our friend, Sibley. Now, I'm Winnie, and uh, it's great to see you. I'm glad you're here. Now, I love to play with words. So I thought right now, let's write a story. Let's spend a little bit of time just creating together. We're going to learn more about the exhibit at the DIA. We're going to sing a song. Oh, we're going to look closely at one of the pieces. All right, now, this is a game we call Three Sentence Story, Beginning, Middle, End. That's right. We come up with a story together. So you right here, you, 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 um, we need you to help us with this story. Please tell us an object associated with El Dia de Moretos. What's the word you're thinking of? Sibley just told you a little bit more. Uh, we read a little bit from the book there, Funny Bones. Uh, but tell us an object. We're going to look in the comments. You can post the comments and we'll be on the lookout for those words to put into our story. Now, in the first sentence, this whole story, by the way, is in three sentences. <laughs> so the first sentence uh, will set the scene. In the second sentence, there's a problem. And in the third sentence, we solve the problem. Yep, that's what we do. Short little story. We love playing this game. I love words. I love working together. I love being creative together. So we're here live right now in this moment. We need you to tell us an object. We're going to put that in the story. That's what will set the scene. And it could be any anything at all, too, that you're thinking that, you know, that connects, or whether very logically or goofily. Is that a word? Goofily? I think that's a word. Yeah. You know? So, for example, you know, skull, bones, uh, marigold flowers, um, memories, um, honoring. All right now, nouns work best for us as we play this game. So we're looking for the words that you're thinking of to start the story. Now, this story may end up being silly. It may be pretty logical. Uh, sometimes they take on like a fairy tale style. Sometimes they take on a who, who knows what, because it all depends on the words. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the story is going to be and look and feel until it starts. Ha ha! Thanks, Melinda and family. Ah, skeletons. So we've got our first word to start the story. All right. So we'll set the scene. This morning, I woke up, looked out the window, and saw skeletons dancing. 
YouTube. <laughs> but there's going to be a problem. Yep, there's a problem. The word that inspires the problem will come from you. And then in our third sentence, we're going to solve the problem. We're going to finish up our story solving the problem. So think it over. The word that you post could be, you know, something that's logical, like I said before, something that could be silly. Who knows what is going to be, but I'll recap the start of the sentence, the start of the story. It was this morning. I woke up, looked out the window, and saw skeletons dancing. Hmm. I wonder how they got there. I wonder if it's... You know what what what's going on here? That's that's an interesting start to the story. Ha oh, ha sugar skull. Ha ha ha. Thank you for posting our next word. The problem is sugar skull. Here we go. This morning I woke up, looked out the window, and saw skeletons dancing. The skeleton said, We forgot to bring the sugar skulls to share with you. This is all part of the celebration. I love it. Now, how do we solve this problem? There are no sugar skulls. Moonlight. <laughs> the solution lies in moonlight. Thanks, Beatrice. Here we go. This morning, I woke up, looked out the window, and saw skeletons dancing. They said, we are completely out of sugar skulls to share. As we looked out into the moonlight, Sugar skulls started floating down from the sky. There's a song. Remember the song? Um, Gummy drops and raindrops. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, what a day it would be. I, sugar skulls are dance are like floating down. Oh, I love this creative story. Now, I'm wondering, actually, if these skeletons, I wonder if they were marionette puppets. Hmm. I wonder if it was the neighbors, right? We can add more details to this story. We could expand this. This could be the outline. Who knows? Well, let's go right now to my good friend, Michael. He's over in the, what we call the Wimage Lab. It's time for today's Wimage to go along with today's story. Hi, Michael. Hey, Wimmy and Kevin. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. We're excited to be broadcasting with our friends at the Detroit Institute of the Arts. Awesome. You guys are in Detroit. That's awesome. Well, right now. Well, I'm, I'm over here in, I'm in Grand Rapids, and then and Emily, she's in Detroit. She's going to join us shortly. And um, oh, so the exhibit is in Detroit. Yeah, yeah I should have awesome. clarified that. <laughs> That's awesome. I love the city of yeah. Detroit. I know. Me too. Yeah. All right. So you got a image, an illustration to go yeah. along with the story? Yeah. So, friends, what I did was I took the words that our um, friends sent us as comment, um, comments, and then this is what I began to create. Whoa. Oh, look at that. Let me see the skeletons. I see the moonlight. Wow. Hey, could we add some more details to it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So maybe you've got an idea. Maybe me. Let's ask our friends watching at home. Who's got an idea for what we could add to the picture? Hmm. More possible flowers. Um, maybe you could add some more flowers to it. We're going to add some yeah. candy. Can you imagine yeah. if there were just sugar skulls floating down and be like, that would be a good problem to have. No, that would be a good problem. <laughs> so yeah, yeah add it to candy. candy or flowers. I'm going to add a little bit more. Um, so I've got candy and so the way the the app works, uh, Wimmy and friends in Detroit, is you have to spell the word and then instantly the word becomes an image. So Wimmy, can you spell the word flowers for me? Yeah, flowers. So we'd add that F L O W E R S. Awesome. Flowers. Thank you for that. And what color should the flowers be, Wimmy? Oh, uh, orange. Orange. Got yeah, marigold. Awesome. Oh, let's see. Whoa. Wow. I love it. It's like a kind of a tulip -y. Um yeah. can, we, can we explore the flowers? Can we click on it and see? Which yeah. options we have for the So flowers. I can double can tap change. on word flowers. Yeah. How about oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that one? I like that one. Yeah. Like that yeah. One? yeah, I like that one. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Michael, thanks for uh, making today's Wimage. Friends watching, you can download the app for free in the Apple Store. And uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what you made there, Michael. I'll awesome. check in with have, you later. Have fun, all our friends, family watching from Detroit and all around the country. Woo-hoo!
Thanks, Michael. We'll see you later. All right, so it's time right now to check in with Emily over at the DIA. She's going to tell us more about the awesome exhibit opening up. Hi, Emily. Hi, Wimmy. Hi, Kevin. How are you? <laughs> we are having a great time. We made a story, made a image, a picture, and um, we're excited to be doing the show with you guys today. Yeah, I'm so excited that you guys are able to help us celebrate the opening of our new exhibition. I love it. Will you tell everybody more about the sure. awesome exhibition? This uh, exhibition is called Ofrenda, Celebrating El Dia de Muertos. Uh, and it's an annual exhibition at the DIA. We have, we've been, this is our eighth annual um, Dia, celebrating de, El Dia de Muertos. Uh, and it's also one of the only exhibitions where we feature the work of local artists. So the museum does a open call so anyone can, can submit an idea of what they'd like to do and who they'd like to honor. Uh, and then we, we look at all the submissions and a selection committee chooses who to be a part of the exhibition. Uh, and then we put together the, these beautiful altars um, and that are on display for six weeks um, around the time when uh, Day of the Dead occurs. Um, so that's huge, that's November 1st and 2nd. Uh, and so the exhibition is always open then. Um, and this year we uh, did some special things because it's a difficult year and not everyone's able to come out and visit us, but um, everyone can visit the exhibition online. All they have to do is go to the DIA's website um, and find the exhibition page and you'll be able to explore the entire exhibit online. Um, and we're also doing a special social media campaign where people can submit images um, on Facebook or Instagram and uh, we'll actually have it be a part of the exhibition. We are projecting some images over a, a community altar uh, so wow. everyone can honor someone they loved in this ex this exhibition. Wow, it is beautiful. I love the color. I love the variety. I love how it honors, uh, you know, special people in there and it keeps their memory vibrant and, and connected. And, and look at that right there. Did you see the beautiful colors yeah. and the, the shape and the sculptures? Wow. One of and my favorite that. things having worked on this exhibition for several years is I get to, to talk with the artists and some of these artists, you know, have grown up with this tradition and their, their parents and their grandparents have grown up with this tradition and they have really intimate stories about their great grandparents. And, you know, I feel very lucky that I even know my great grandmother's name, but um, it's just such a wonderful way to celebrate the life of, of people that you've lost while at the yeah. same time, you know, having a you know a, a togetherness where you can come together and grieve yes indeed indeed and how long has this been um uh, an exhibition over the years at the dia so this is the eighth annual uh it started out as like a one weekend program where we had some some artists come and put together an altar for that you could come and see a one weekend at the dia uh, and then since then it's grown it went to two weeks and then four weeks and now it's a six week exhibition Wow, it was so great. Emily, thank you for uh, sharing more about it. And um, I just think it's beautiful that we can access it in different ways right now too. Yeah, well, thank you so much for uh, helping us uh, spread the word. So I hope everyone can come see it. Absolutely, thanks Emily. Ha <laughs> ha, we wanna spend some more time looking closely at one of the pieces. So this is a segment we're gonna call Exploring Art. Hello, Wimmy. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> hey, let's tell everybody watching who you are. You're producing the show. You're I running am. it backstage. It's right true. Now, you're going to help lead us in a conversation about one of the pieces of art at the exhibit exhibition right now. Yes, so let's start looking closer at one of the altars that is at this exhibition. And so, Wimmy, I'm wondering if you and our viewers can name some things that they notice in this particular altar. Great, let's do it. So as you're watching, friends, if you see something, tell us in the comments. Now, I notice marigold flowers. Oh, now what do you see that makes you say those are marigold Ooh. flowers? Well, um, I see the, the orange colors, um, and it reminds me that I've seen flowers before. So it, it, I'm thinking of what I remember about marigold flowers, and Sibley shared with us about it. So I connect what I learned from Sibley, what I'm seeing, and what I remember. 
Nice. So you remember the colors that miracles are usually orange and yellow. And like you said, you've seen them before and you know their shape, that they have multiple petals and they're usually that round shape. Yeah. Nice. Well, I wonder what some of our viewers can notice in here. What's I something else that you notice? What else can you find in here, Wimmy? Um, I noticed there's a connection to the Marines. Oh, yes, I see that word. It looks to me like a jersey yeah. of some I kind. I recognize the stripes and the shape of a jersey and the fabric and the words. Let's see. Oh, I see candles, lots of candles. Ah, I noticed that too, the, the brightness of the candle. Those look like the shape of candles. Hmm. Our friends watching at home, what do you notice? What are some things that you see? Wimmy, I see um, some colorful shapes that look like skulls. Maybe those are the papel picado, but in the shape of skulls. Did you notice that? Yeah, I see I see two of them, one on the lower shelf and one up kind of in the middle. Hmm. And so many and colors, like you said. Yeah. Oh, there's something I noticed um, on the left side, the N and the Y. Did you see that? For New York, I did. Was I? Uh, can, let's go. Let's look. Yeah, let's keep looking. Okay. I want to see. I saw it's um on the left. And, oh yeah, it's a hat. That's, that's, yes, that's a, that's a baseball cap. I think. I think you're right. For the Yankees, right? New York. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, the logo. Right. Oh, pictures. Ooh. Yes, ah. a friend watching at home. Thank you, Colleen and the Deswell family. You noticed some photographs of people. These must be some of the people, the loved ones, who are being honored and celebrated today. Yeah. You know, I'm what wondering else can about, we find? Well, I'm wondering about with these photographs. Yeah, the story, the history, the legacy, the memories. Um, oh, sunglasses. Wait, no, not sunglasses. It looked like sunglasses, but it's painted around the eyes on the skull, the artwork in the bottom right. It reminds me of sunglasses, but I don't know. I wonder if that is. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. And I wonder if the we saw the Yankees hat, if that being next to the person, the photograph, that particular one, if that particular person was a big fan. I bet I, I bet I think so. That would that would make sense because it's to honor their 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 personality, their passions, their interests. Exactly. Oh, wow. Friends, what else do you notice? What are some details that you see? Anything else that Wimmy and I have missed? Mm, I see. Yep. Oh, on the right, do you see that hat? That hat is NC. I wonder what the N and the C stand for. I wonder. Well, this is just beautiful. And the more you look at something, the more things you can notice. Have you noticed that as well? Yeah. I, I wonder how many candles. I'm gonna, I could count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Do, do you see nine candles? No, I see more than that. 10, oh. 11, 12, 13. I want to say 15, 15, 15, because look, there are small ones, Wimmy. I don't know if I noticed that detail. Yeah, there were some really small ones, and then there were the tall ones. Whoa. Man. Well, that was so cool, being able to look close and wonder and think of more about that. And in the, in the exhibit, exhibition, they've got... 13 different altars that are built there and created by they do. artists. They do. And I noticed that some of them had similar um, items in them, and then some were very different. So much variety. Yeah. Well, thanks, Wimmy, for letting me be on the show today. And what? I'll go back to being backstage, and we'll wrap up our show. All right. Thanks, Stephanie. Bye. All right. Well, friends, I think we should sing a song. As we get ready to wrap up our song, our show, let's sing a song inspired by skeletons. In fact, can you tell us a bone? Now, it could be very scientific and technical, like your kneecap. It's called the patella. I think it's it. I, I'm going off memory here. Any medical? Yeah, patella. So if you want to get real technical, or you could say um, hip. Or you could say, I don't know, you decide what bone. And we're going to we're gonna do the hokey pokey <laughs> using those words. So I'm going to start with um, forearm, right? Ready? If you want to you want to dance along, if you want to sing along, here we go. You put your forearm in, you put your forearm out. What? What? I'm sorry. You put your forearm in and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. 
That's what it's all about. All right, so we're looking for you to help us. Tell us a bone. Oh, femur. Yes, now, um, femur, is that leg? I think I'm gonna, I'm trying to remember, leg. I think it's leg. So I uh, get my leg, right? You put your, now should we do the left or right? I'm gonna go with my right side. You put your right femur in, you put your right femur out. You put your right femur in and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Oh man, how many bones? Does anybody know how many bones are uh, our island skeleton? I forgot to research that before the show. I was thinking about that. Okay, skull, ready? You put your skull in, you put your skull out. You put your skull in and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. <laughs> skull. <laughs> yeah, I would get, you know. Let's do one or two more. One or two more. I love this. And if you know how many bones the human body has, let us know. I'm going to research that after the show. All right. So we got, we did our forearm. We did our right femur. We did our skull. Uh, patella. Should we do patella? All right. Let's do patella. Oh, I think, uh, you know what? I think, uh, did, did, hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me do something. <laughs> Just did a little research with my antenna. 206 bones. I forgot I've got that button. I can uh, check the satellite. 206 bones. Yeah. Okay. So uh, patella, right? Uh, let's do left patella. You put your left patella in. You put your left patella out. You put your left patella in and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Well, let's get ready to wrap up this song. I'm open for one more bone. One more possibility. Let's see. Uh, spine? How about we do spine? Our whole our whole spine? Are you ready? All right, we're going to wrap up with spine. You put your spine in. You put your spine out. You put your spine in and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Oh, we got to put this one in from Teddy, Addie, and Grace. Your pelvis. That's like your hip, right? Pelvis. You put your pelvis in, you put your pelvis out. You put your pelvis in and you shake it all about. I think Elvis would be proud. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Yeah, that was so much fun. Well, friends, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we get to go live on Facebook here with the DIA um, on Saturdays once a month. So the next one, October 24th. Will you join us? We're going to have another exhibition, another uh, collaborative episode here. You can always join us weekdays at 1 on the Winnie Facebook page. And we're so thrilled to be working together and all the cool things that the DIA does. Well, thanks, friends. That wraps it up for now. Stay great. Stay cool. Keep being you. Check out the DIA exhibitions. See you later. Bye-bye.